Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as The Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. In this video, I have a couple of patients, and this is patient one who attended with a blot righty. And this patient had really soft, wet, loose, medially impacted wax. When we say medially, we mean towards the eardrum, so it's deeper within the ear canal. And they had quite a narrowing of the ear canal as well in the midsection. Where I am now, you can see on the right-hand side the, the ear canal wall and the suction probe, which is about 2.1 millimetres in thickness, um, can just get past that narrowing. Beyond that, as you can see, the ear canal widens, it protrudes back out again. I'm um, having a bit of difficulty to suction this wax because of the consistency. It's quite sticky and glutinous, so um, I've just put some medical grade olive oil spray in, but when I did, it, because of that narrowing, it didn't go all the way through the ear canal. As you can see, that wax is still enough, um, left untouched, so I just applied some more um, olive oil spray. I was, uh, ensured that I just inserted the nozzle a bit deeper so I can get beyond the narrowing. And now that oil has started to penetrate that deeper wax. So it's going to stretch the ear open. And I'm now slowly going to work away at this wax. At times it might be slightly blurry, and that's because I'm actually performing microsuction whilst the oil's in the ear. So not only is the suction probe vacuuming the wax, it's also suctioning some of the oil, which can cause a bit of blurry. So I just had to be careful um, on occasions. I just came away, wiped the lens to reduce any blame. But you can see how I'm just massaging this wax. I'm just trying to tease it off the floor of the ear canal. And slowly now it's, it's, it's coming away. So it just got a bit blurry. I decided to come away with the suction probe. I'm going to re-enter the ear. And just by loosening the wax, as I did there, the patient did notice an improvement in the hearing because this plug was completely occluding this, the, the ear canal wall. There's no sound or air managing to get through the sides of the plug. There's a complete air, airtight and sound tight seal. And just by breaking that seal, patients can notice. So again, it just got slightly blurry. I did need to use the oil though, otherwise it'd be very hard to remove this plug of wax. It's just too deep to use a Jobson horn or an ear hook. In fact, an ear hook would just slice through this. A Jobson horn would have to go in and behind the wax plug, which would mean making contact with the canal wall, which would have been really uncomfortable for the patient, given that we're on the bony part, the osse osseous portion of the ear canal. If the wax was on the outer third, the cartilage portion, we were able to glide it over um, the wax plug up against the canal wall, any instruments, because it would be less uncomfortable for the patient, if at all. But when we're working as deep as we are, we're just going to be cautious. Sometimes as well, you can get osteomas, um, so bony growth, hiding behind this wax, which we're unaware of, so we can. it's always possible making contact with those. And as you can see, this oil's worked a treat. I'm just going to gonna come through that narrowing. So we're at the midsection now where the ear canal is narrow. The entrance is also quite narrow, so they've got a couple of narrowings in the ear. So I'm just going to tease it through this um, narrow section of the ear canal. You can see it's enveloped in dead skin. And I would say I've got half of the plug out. That um, There is a gap now over the top of this wax plug, but we want to get this away. We've got to be careful that we don't overuse the drops as well, because if we overuse the drops, it'll make the wax possibly too wet, too loose, and it'll sort of come away in large chunks as it is. It'll come away in smaller pieces, which means it's a lot harder to clean. That's the patient's eardrum. It's fully visible, looks healthy. I'm just going to now mop up around the edge. I think I'm going to attach the fine end suction probe just to get access into the deeper part of the ear canal. So this is that midsection. This is where the ear canal narrows. It's where the cartilage portion and the bony part of the ear canal meet. And we call this region the isthmus. You can see the suction probe was making contact with the canal wall, just as it is now on the right hand side. So that's the cartilage. You can see it moving. So the cartilage is semi-flexible. That's the boundary beyond that. It's all bone and the bone is, of course, rigid. 
watching this back, it just uh, also you can see how bendy this patient's ear canal is. It veers off to the left, through the narrowing, back to the right. It's just a speck of wax at the floor of the ear canal. I've got a feeling I'm just going to hover over that to see, see if it comes away. And the ear canal is quite bumpy. It goes up, down, up and down again. So there's quite a few anatomical challenges in this particular case. And then we're done there. So the patient's really pleased. They could hear again. Adrian looks healthy enough. So this is patient two. Patient two had loads of hairs in the ears. You can see it's almost like a forest uh, of hairs just where I am now. These hairs, unfortunately, um, are more common amongst um, the male species. And as we age, uh, I, I'm not sure why, but um, as we age, as men, we stop growing hairs at the back of our head, for example, the crown region or te uh, temple region, the side of our foreheads. However, we, we seem to um, develop and grow hairs at a rapid rate um, inside our noses and across our ears so um, now would this amount of hair be a contributing factor towards this patient's buildup of wax possibly because you can see the hairs are almost they're matted against the wax and it's almost forming like a spider's web at the entrance so it can trap the wax from coming out um, now what do we recommend to the patient it's we wouldn't recommend really trimming these hairs because by trimming them because they're quite deep in the well, they're in the outer third. That's only that's the region where the hair should be, but it's it means entering the ears. And by trimming them, they could fly deeper in the ear, and they're only going to grow back. That's the problem. You, you trim these hairs, they're going to be back sooner, soon enough. So it's a short term fix. So I've got. I think this patient will be okay. There is some patients where I do pluck them at the appointment. Um, and that's because we just can't see beyond them. But we don't have to do that with this particular patient. And in the middle, it's really clear. You can see it's a nice, uh, clear um, mid-root section. Again, you can see all those hairs matted up against the wax. I'm just going to tease this away. It's a lot of skin attached to this plug of wax as well. And the skin is also attached to the ear canal wall. It once was the outer layer of skin on the ear canal wall, but it's since been replaced by its um, it daughter cells. So the skin on the ear canal, it undergoes a, a process called mitosis, so that's cell division and replication. And the parent cell gets pushed upwards towards the, ent towards the entrance uh, uh, and the surface of the ear canal by its um, daughter cell. Um, until eventually the parent cell is the, the outermost layer of skin. And at that point, the skin goes undergoes a, a process called um, cornification, where these skin cells, they die, all the intracellular fluid is lost, all the organelles, so um, uh, mitochondria, uh, ribosomes, all these organelles within the ear canal, Golgi apparatus, they, they die, they decompose, and the cell, within the cell, the intercellular fluid is replaced by keratin. So keratin is a protein that's also found in our hair strands and fingernails. And keratin has got really uh, very important characteristics in terms of the ear. It's hydrophobic, so it helps to repel water away from the ear canal because water is actually bad for our ears. It can lead to swimmer's ear infection. And the keratin also helps to reflect and repel harmful UV ray, rays. So it is quite important that the outer layer of skin does contain keratin. But that skin had failed to fully migrate and it had enveloped itself around the wax plug. So it was part of the wax plug and part of the, uh, still attached to the ear canal. You can see again, quite a few hairs here. They're just protruding out from the ear canal, but in the core, it's got a clear root. You can see the eardrum. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.